This is a Casio PB300 programmable, basic programmable calculator sold as four parts not working. All I had to do was replace the two CR2032s in the back and it came right up. Uh, the basic is pretty nifty. If we go mode one right, program zero, let's do 10 I equals I plus one, 20, Oops. Print I thirty go to ten. Then we go mode zero for run program zero good. And we run it. And it's not doing it. Oh, every time we do print, it goes stop. So you have to step through it every time there's a print command. But if we go look at our listing, oops. So we're going to edit 20, line 20, we're going to put a semicolon on there, which means continue the line. There. Go back to run. So there, it fills up the line and it very slowly scrolls across, giving you time to read it. Or maybe that's just how fast it can process a screen buffer shift. Um, but yeah, it works pretty neat. The only issue though is the printer. Make sure the printer is on mode seven. Printer came on, doesn't work. If we look at the back, there's a power reading for three volt times two or 4.8 power supply, 4.8 volt power supply, which is akin to um, some NICADs in there. It says charger. So there's some internal batteries in here. I'm assuming that's what's gonna drive these since the coin cells aren't gonna give enough power to uh, bring that up. So let's pop it open and have a look. I have two Phillips screws. And it seems to be catching right here. Definitely catching right in there. So let's see. The upper case is lapping over the bottom case. So we need to come in from down here. Oh, there we go. There's our little catch. And how will this one open? Perfect. There we go. There's our battery pack. And it is completely disconnected. There's corrosion. It looked like triple A size. Okay, so the positive lead is broken. You can see there's some NICAD residue, residue here, some nickel corrosion. That has eaten a trace. That trace is completely dissolved. Okay, so we're gonna need to rebuild that. Place this wire. That trace is on its way out. Okay, let me go grab some vinegar. There we are. Get some Q-tips. Just put it on there. Let that soak in to neutralize that electrolyte from the battery. Just gonna yank that off. Look at that. So if we put vinegar on here, see how that fizzes up? So the acidity of the vinegar is neutralizing the alkaline or the base of the battery. And that is corrosive to the circuit. So I'm just gonna let the circuit soak in that for a minute while I build us a new battery pack. I'm going to use some nickel metal hydrides, generic brand. This is presumably a nickel cadmium. And charging wise, they're generally the same, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna fire up my iron. So we've got some solder, some tape, some wire. So first I'm going to cut three lengths of wire, just enough to bridge between the battery contacts to build a nice large series pack. And make our own little leads, which are roughly about two inches long. I'm going to 
use the brown as our positive and black as our negative indicator. Now when soldering batteries, I like to make sure it's nice and hot. Because you don't want to dwell with high heat on batteries because you could damage them, cause them to explode. I'm going to score the bottoms to give the solder a nice fresh textured area to adhere to. I'm going to tin the batteries. I'm using a moistened finger, i.e. covered in spit, to rapidly cool that so there's no lingering heat on the battery. So I don't want to damage the cells. Alright, cool. Let's get our battery links stripped and ready to go. I'll also tin these. I love the tinning method because you don't have to manage two things being soldered with the solder. Three points coming together. Where'd my black wire go. Okay, we'll, we'll come to that later. Not sure what happened to that. Did I brush it off the table? Oh well, anyway. So we have a blob of solder there, solder ready to go on the wire. That was quick. So again, everything is tinned and ready to bond. So it's just smooth action from here. So I'm doing positive, negative, positive, negative. There's our battery chain. I'm going to start insulating things, make it look a little cleaner. I don't have shrink wrap on me. That would be ideal. Let's cover the bottom. Then wrap it. Wrap the middle. Cover the top. And then wrap that. There, now we have a rebuilt-ish pack. So going back to the calculator. The yellow wire was positive, green was negative. I'm just going to scrape some of the solder mask off. It looks like it has corrosion damage. It tends to flake off pretty easily.
Let's clean that up. Well, the copper's all intact. I mean, it is obviously been eaten away at at the sides, but it's all intact. Good. I'm going to go ahead and lay some solder on top just to uh, reinforce that. Let's get our green off. Our yellow off. It's our old positive and negative. Mm, this smells like a paper PCB. Clean. Refresh this blue wires connection because it looks a little off. It doesn't want to melt very easily. That solder's been corrupted. to the negative the battery. So I'm not sure why it has its own pad way down here. Alright, let's attach our battery pack. So negative was on the green down here. Okay. Positive was up here. The yellow. There we go. I suppose I should bring this over the battery pack. Well, better yet, start over. Let's bring that in from over here. our new pack. Let's get some sticky tape in there so it doesn't just rattle around. There we go, nice and snug. Our three bottom clips down there. Those are in. Okay, good, good, good. Our middle clip there. We are sealed. Power up. So far, so good. Oh, feed works without printer mode. So let's go printer on. Oops, mode seven on. Okay, one plus two. Okay, it works. One plus two, three. Awesome. Cool. So let's go to, let's see, can I print from run mode? I can. Oh prints the whole statement when I air it out. So it's probably because I'm in print mode, so let's turn that off. Let's do L print, maybe. No. The right mode. Nothing like that. Let's go back to run mode, printer on, and run it. So it scrolls faster because it's printing. That's cool. So it does slow the display down when it's not printing, so you have time to read it. And if you have the printer on, 
it doesn't bother because you're going to be able to recall it off the printer tape. Awesome. So this thing is fixed. Very cool. Well, one more thing I'm curious about with the pausing and the printer mode. If we have multi-line prints where it would make me step through it, would still force me to step through it. So 10, get rid of the semicolon. Let's do the number plus my name, or my handle, I should say. Okay, let's go back to run. Printer mode is off, so if I run this, it's number my name, number my name, number my name. Okay, stop, turn the printer on. Now what happens if we run it? Okay, it is zooming through. It doesn't make me step it. So, number, name, number, name. Cool. Stop. That's enough. Cool. So today is 2022-0818. Awesome. 1996.